Why are we concerned with confirmations other than shares? Clearly, shares are the most important confirmation, but we do need to consider other confirmations in the transition between shares. This is illustrated with the explanation of the first Plattner rule. Three-membered rings that contain a heteroatom, X, not carbon, nor hydrogen, can open when attacked by a nucleophile. Examples include epoxide, where X is oxygen, bromonium iron, where X is bromine, and iminium iron, where the analogy of X would be the lone pair. Now, if you think the iminium iron isn't a three-membered ring and seems not to be very similar to epoxide nor bromonium iron, you'd be correct and in good company. We'll talk about the similarities shortly. Robert Burns Woodward was one of the most esteemed synthetic organic chemists and used such a reaction with the critical reduction of an aluminium iron by the nucleophile being hydride, hydrogen anion, to become an amine in the synthesis of a natural product called reserpine. However, the reaction gave the wrong stereochemistry, spatial arrangement. The outcome was not predicted and has since been rationalized by the first Plattner rule. The consequence of the ideal angle of approach of the nucleophile to the three-membered ring results in an anti-periplanar relationship between X and the nucleophile. In a ring, this is a diaxial relationship also. We'll look at the epoxide as an example. Let's think about it in 3D. Immediately, you see it's a half chair conformation. This is true for epoxide, bromonium iron, and cyclic aluminium iron. The nucleophile can attack either carbons of the epoxide. What happens if the nucleophile attacks carbon-4 relative to carbon-1 with the R group attached? Well, the reaction goes through a high-energy chair transition state. The chair conformation alternates axial-equatorial-axial-equatorial axial for a substituent on each carbon facing in the same direction. So down would be an example. With this chair, Ultimately, because the R group must be equatorial to avoid 1,3 diaxial interactions, this hydrogen is down and equatorial. So the nucleophile on the next carbon will, if coming from below, be axial, from the opposite face to the epoxide oxygen. Thus, on the next carbon, the oxygen is on the upper face and also axial. Nucleophile and X are both diaxial. We are making a regioselective choice between nucleophilic attack at carbons three and four. So, what about the other option where the nucleophile attacks carbon three with the same chair conformation? This hydrogen substituent is down and axial. So on the next carbon, where the nucleophile is also down, it must be equatorially orientated because the R group must be equatorial to avoid 1,3 diaxial interactions. The problem is that the nucleophile isn't antiperiplanar to the oxygen. It would allow optimal orbital orientation, but synclinal. So this can't form. This regioselectivity doesn't allow optimal orbital orientation of the nucleophile to the epoxide, nor bromonium, nor iminium ions. The nucleophile approach to carbon-3 can be antiperiplanar, diaxial with the ring, to the oxygen, but not with a chair conformation. The ring has to adopt a twist boat conformation. Now, the nucleophile at carbon-3 has an anti-periplanar 
diaxial relationship with the oxygen. The twist boat conformation leads to the alternate chair conformation, but the nucleophile and R groups have a 1 3 diaxial interaction. Ring flipping to the other chair form that we just explored trying to form directly would be better with the oxygen anion, nucleophile, and R group all being equatorial. But the carbon 3 nucleophilic attack twist boat is 21 kilojoules per mole higher in energy than the carbon-4 nucleophilic attack chair. So, the carbon-3 nucleophilic attack twist boat will not form.